Right now, I'm gonna give you five tips on how to save seeds for your broccoli. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. And what a glorious day. We just had an, a beautiful rain and uh, it was just giving some life to the earth. It's a real blessing. Uh, but right now, I am right in front of my dried broccoli seeds. How do you go about saving seeds from your brassicas? The broccoli is part of the species called Brassica oleracea. Now, here's the thing. Uh, broccoli happens to be a part of this species, but so is also Brussels sprouts and cabbage and kale and collards and kohlrabi. And uh, you may say, uh, okay, they're all part of the same species. Who cares? I mean, who cares about those Latin words? Here's the thing. Here's the reason it's important, because if you try to save seed in the same area, uh, within, this, within proximity to each other, if you're trying to save seeds from broccoli, kale, uh, cauliflower, these kind of things, and they're near each other, since they're in the same species, they're actually going to potentially pollinate each other. And now you're gonna have a, a Frankenstein brassica. You don't know what's gonna come out next. And so that would be what's considered a hybrid. When you take two different things of the same species, you end up uh, pollinating one with the other, and you, the next generation, you, may, it might, uh, you might not know exactly what will come out. And uh, so you want to make a good distance between your plants. Before I tell you how to actually uh, get the seeds, what I, want you, what I want you to see is the process of what you have to go through to actually uh, grow your plant. You want to grow it just like you'd n grow a normal broccoli plant. And then you actually want it to grow beyond the nice head like you have. Normally, you see that you know beautiful head ready to eat. You just want to cut it off and you want to eat it. But in this situation, you actually let it continue to grow past so it doesn't look so good. So notice what it looks like. So here you have your first one. It looks it's just beyond where you'd normally want it. And then we move from there to it grows even further. And at this point, it's getting close, maybe even uh, flowering a little bit. But now we move on to look what happens when it's really flowering. Here it is starting to flower, but that's not serious yet. But then look at this. Oh, man, isn't that glorious? It's beautiful yellow flowers, man. Uh, God's amazing, right? The things that he made for us. And uh, just before they go to seed, they become the most beautiful that they could be, right? So once they go on past the flower stage, then you get to this stage where uh, you actually have the dried seed heads. Now, some of these you, can, you might be able to see are still green. Those ones are not quite ready for harvesting. But then you have other ones like these that are, they are fully ready to harvest. And I want you to see, get a little idea of what it looks like. If you, if you take one of these seeds and you literally can just begin to open it up and they just begin to fall right out into your hand. The, the seeds come up very simple. You can just let them drop right out into your hand and you see these uh, little black gorgeous seeds that almost perfectly circular or spherical rather. Not perfectly, but quite spherical. As we already said, you can't have things within the same, uh, the same species growing too close together at, in, in flowering at the same time. That's the problem. Now, they can grow close. You can grow all of the different brassicas at the same time. That's not a problem. But you want to make sure that when, they're, when the flowers are coming out, that only one of the varieties is flowering at the same time. And so one year, maybe you'll do your broccoli. Another year, maybe you'll do your kale and you get the idea. And so then you could save extra seeds for years to come. Now, the distance that you want to keep them apart is somewhere between 800 feet and a half mile if they are flowering at the same time. Now, I guess I do have that distance. If I grew it right at the front of my property, I could get within the 800 feet distance. And since I have uh, a forest between this open area and the region that I cleared in the front of the property where we're growing some things, I could actually do two brassicas in the same year. And if you have, you know, maybe 20 acres plus, you could probably do the same thing. But in, in general, with small, a very small homestead of maybe uh, two to five acres, you probably would be wanting to grow one. You can grow all of them, but you only want to let one of them go to seed. So you got to harvest the Brussels sprouts or you got to harvest the uh, cabbage or kale or what have you and uh, don't let them go except for one of them whatever one you want to go to seed but by the way broccoli is the generally the only one within this 
species, that is what is called an annual. The other ones are biennial, meaning they take two years to come to seed. So I will do other videos on the, you know, whether it's potentially in the future, the Brussels sprouts or the kale and these kind of things. But for now, we're just looking at our broccoli. Now this is an annual, so we'll get the seed in one year, specifically for the broccoli that comes to a head. The heading broccoli is an annual. And uh, for home gardening, you want to save seed. Here's the thing, if you only save seed from one plant, you'll get plenty. I mean, you'll get more than enough seeds for your little homestead, probably from one plant. But the problem is, if you don't, if you don't take seeds from several plants, you end up having this genetic problem. The, the sphere, it, it becomes like a, you know, it comes down to a head and you begin to lose genetic information. And in time, it can actually cause trouble to your crop. So in this situation, you want to actually save seed from a minimum for, for saving for your home from about 20 to 50 different plants. And so you realize saving seed is a, uh, it's a real uh, serious decision to make. Now, hey, if you can only save from one or two or three, you do what you can. But the reality is in the long run, if you wanna keep up the genetic diversity within your plants, you wanna save for home gardening for a minimum of about 20 different plants, or else you get this kind of uh, genetic bottlenecking or genetic atrophy or entropy or where you begin to lose the genetic information and that can actually cause damage to future crops. And um, another thing to think about, and I already mentioned it, when they're green, they're not ready, um, they're getting ready, they are actually ready when they are brown. And at this point, probably 80 to 90% of these ones over here are dried. And these over here actually, I would say not even near that, probably 10, not even, yeah, maybe 10, 15% are. So you can see some, some will go faster than others. And uh, you could gather up, I mean, I could just, if I, if I saw really bad weather coming, I could probably just uproot these few plants right here, bring them inside and let these continue their process of drying out and um, out here. And then later on, I could actually pluck these out. And then the process is very simple, like I said, but do your best to get seeds from as many of the plants as you can uh, and plant those seeds from different plants each year. And um, that way, or at least save seeds until the year that you're gonna actually save seed again and make sure that you have a diversity planted so that year you can also do the same thing. So seed planting is super fulfilling. And think about it, it's one of the best investments you could make in your entire life. I mean, you think about it, uh, now, you know, people put money in the stock market and these kind of things and they go up, they go down. And that does happen with seeds too. You have good years and you have bad years. But the reality is, is this is something that you can buy one time and have these seeds for the rest of your life. So uh, get out and garden and, uh, or, you know, sometimes we watch these things in the winter. If it's, if it's winter and you can't, you can at least dream about it. The, the joys of being out, the freedom of, of, you know, having the, the wind and the sunshine on your back. We can at least dream of those days if it's winter for you right now. But I wanna, you know, if you, if you like this video, uh, hit the subscribe button. We have videos on, on natural remedies that are scientifically tested head to head with drugs. We have information on how to homestead. Uh, simple things like how to cut wood or it will have things like how to use a chainsaw and, and these various things. And um, check it out if you like this video. Uh, hit the thumbs up button and uh, God bless and have a great day.